Today we're breaking down the devious lion in Azura, starting with his clever disguise as clergy beast he will be a vicious force with a different strategy altogether. We're going to break it down step by step and then we're going to check out a build I put together for farming Melketh in co-op. So buckle up, smash that tarnished finger on the like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed cause like, Bruh. step one, Melketh or in this case beast clergyman will spit some truth and start bum rushing you. Get ready because this face is completely backwards from previous fights as you only want to attack after or during his shanks and rock throws. This attack has two different timings. In this case, there's a delay, but there will be a faster cast version, so watch out. And there it is. That move is a big reason why you can't attack when he's standing still. It's ridiculously quick and will punish you for even trying. His size in this case works against him as you can usually get behind him to deal some damage while he's attacking or preparing an incantation. Step 2. He's going to drag his knife through the ground. As you can see, this is a great time to deal some damage. Note, he follows up with another one of those very quick rock throws. Malekith is doing a great job at making this feel like an NPC fight. Took me longer to get the hang of phase 1 than the second. That's what happens if you get greedy. He hits me while just preparing his incantation. Step 3. When he slams his fist into the ground, he can do a couple different things that each have their own tell. In this case, you can hear a sonar sounding effect. That means he's casting the Beast Claw Sonic AoE, which can be avoided by rolling to the side, depending on where you stand, or simply by jumping over. These ground attacks, like most in the game, are usually easier to avoid by jumping straight into the air, which as a result grants the opportunity to come down with a heavy attack. Step 4. This come at you with my dagger move has great reach. I advise rolling towards to avoid and keep it in mind when you're trying to pop off a heal. This was my first playthrough so it's a great chance to showcase some of the mistakes I made. Like I said this clergy fight was difficult for me to grasp timing and strategy wise but I'll show you what being keyed in looks like in a bit. Step 5. He's gonna pull some rocks out of the ground again but this time it's a large boulder. This will be his long range attack in phase 1 so watch out for that even if you think you're far enough. Also make Make use of the pillars while they are there. Step 6. The only other thing you really need to look out for is his ultra shockwave move where he slams the ground with his fist and creates a huge sonic explosion that tosses boulders into the sky. You can get around this by timing your dodge iframes, but watch out because about 2 seconds later they come back down. I find dodging through to have an awkward timing as you almost have to do it before they enter the screen. But with a lot of practice it's not too bad and leaves plenty of openings. Now that you know all his moves, get down the dance with the beast man and prepare for phase 2. Before starting the fight, you're going to want to make a quick detour to the following location to retrieve a special item for fighting Melikath. The item is called Blasphemous Claw and is specifically designed to parry Melikath when he does certain attacks. For now, go to the locations as shown, but prepare yourself because you're going to have to fight an NPC and NPCs are never a joke. This guy hits really hard and I actually had to swap out the curved greatswords because I wasn't causing him to flinch whatsoever. I brought out the ultra greatsword and things went a lot smoother. If that's the weapon you're using, then keep an eye out on how I go about it, but the biggest thing to take away is that when he does his Nihil looking flame attack, you should interrupt it because you most likely can't outrun it. Though if it's like Nihil, you could probably roll through if timed right. I personally just lunge into the air and shut down his little prayer. Boom! Now you have the Blasphemous Claw along with a few other cool items and are ready for Malakath. As you can see, Malakath's blade went bright yellow when he jumped off the pillar. This is one of two moves you can parry, so keep that in mind. Just remember, it has to be glowing yellow. Step 7. When he starts hovering in the air and shooting projectiles, it means you have an opportunity to parry coming up. Sometimes it's two shots but usually it's three and after the third one he's gonna be coming in hot so hit him with the blasphemous all and reap the reward. There's a chance to still take damage so try to time it like a normal parry. Notice how he wasn't even going after me but I was able to get close enough for the parry bubble to reach him ending with the same results. Here's a few more examples of what it looks like. It's very easy to still take damage so keep an eye on your health before doing this just to be safe. Don't forget the pillar jump is parryable as well. Now let's get back to the fight. Step 8. When he reels far back like this and has a long delay watch out because he's going to be pulling a little dance with the stars here and do a 360 sweet maneuver. If you dodge while slightly behind him, you can avoid the second hit while retaliating. Malekith has a low stagger threshold, so you should abuse that fact. Step 9. We know we can parry this, but for the sake of showcasing the move, watch out for the delayed ground explosion. Basically, just get out of dodge if you aren't parrying. Step 10. Again, if you're not parrying, you need to watch out because he will be coming after you with a heavy dive after about 2 or 3 shots. But on a side note, boy does Malekith know how to get that hang time. Step 11. This move has far less of a tell, so it can be devastating. As you can probably guess from all the red flames, it's gonna blow. You need to watch your HP more than ever as his attacks will drain your health when landed. And that's Melikath. Great fight, 
great design and tempo. Easily one of the best boss battles in the game. So naturally, when you've completed your end, I highly recommend going in for some Sunbro action. So my anti Malaketh build comprises of dual wielding beastmen curved great swords with bleed. Malaketh is indeed weak to bleed, as is most everything in this game. But especially when fighting co-op, far as I'm concerned, there's no such thing as beating a boss too fast or easy. I add a swarm of flies in case he has some distance. I like to cast some flies and then rush him with the slicers to finish off the bleed gauge. I try to boost jumping damage and bleed with talismans and I'm wearing his own armor for irony. You need at least 20 points in irony to really humiliate the boss. Get close, jump and L1 to maximize the amount of hits you dish out, thus raising the bleed gauge. And if you know it moves well enough, you'll get by without taking a single hit. There's one more fight that kind of puts it all together. A few other things of note for this build is the Beast Claw for incantations, such as Flame Grand Me Strength and using Blood Flies. A couple tips for co-op, if you're playing with the caster, then naturally you want to pull aggro so they can get their spells off. If you're with another melee, you want to keep an eye on their health. If they start to get hit, try your best to intervene because unless you're the host, you need to keep them alive or it's all over. Most of his regular attacks have heavy tells on them, so dodge accordingly. Other than that, I don't think there's a heck of a lot else to say. Put it all together and have fun putting this dancing lion in its place. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.